everybody, welcome back to Sailing This Lone Star. We are so happy that you've been enjoying the South Africa and East Africa episodes on the channel. Boy, have we been enjoying the blue water. We have gotten so many new subscribers. Thank you so much. Literally hundreds and hundreds of new subscribers. And the interaction has been unbelievable. It's been amazing. The questions are great. We are really enjoying that you're enjoying it as much as we have. So this week and this episode, we're doing something special. We're coming to you real time and we're going to be answering a lot of questions that we've been receiving. So sit back, relax and enjoy. All right. So a lot of you have been asking me, where is Little Miss right now? And let's just back up a little bit. For those of you that have just joined us, um, Little Miss is the boat that I bought for a dollar and refit myself. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Why do you buy a boat for a dollar? A lot of you have asked me why Little Miss? Why a boat for a dollar? Well, the answer to that is that I wanted to show the world that they can do it too. And I'm pretty sure most people have a dollar and some elbow grease. And that's exactly what I did. I took a dollar, found a boat that was derelict and put a whole bunch of my time and effort and energy into repairing her um, and a little bit of funds, but it was nice because I could put it in slowly and splashed her and sailed her up the East Coast. Aubrey, I think, was very, very um, honest with the expenses which you paid. And so I think that if you're having a nine to five job still and you wanted to do that, it's very, very accessible for you to get a boat for a dollar and fix it up. And she's showing all the rigging. She's showing exactly what she did. So if that's your dream, you can do it too and go check that out. Yeah, it was a really cool experience. I definitely recommend um, doing it that way. Even if you do have a lot of money, it's really nice to put your, put your heart and soul into something and then see it sail. So, how did we end up in Africa? Hmm, do we know an African somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm South African and uh, we met in Puerto Rico sailing. I have a boat and she obviously has Little Miss. While she was sailing up the East Coast, I was crossing the Mona Passage from Puerto Rico to Dominican Republic. And the plans was to get the boat together in the Bahamas or maybe in the Caribbean and help her sail down the East Coast. Well, as you all know, the big girl with the name Irma came through and just destroyed everything. So all our plans, everything that we had planned to go back to Puerto Rico, St. Thomas, everything was just up in shambles. Is that even a word? Yes. Um, so what then? We're like, okay, where do we go? We hmm. can't go back to America because of his visa. We can't stay in America. It's getting cold. We're up north. Like, what do we do? Maybe we know a South African. Oh yeah, we do. So we decided to go to South Africa. We have some patrons and friends there that also wanted to come and spend some time with us. And we started sailing. Yeah, it was really great too. We got um, some really neat opportunities for some conservation projects, which you guys can check out on the channel too and on Vimeo. Um, and that was one of the coolest experiences in my life. And I feel like I am forever changed because of that. Not to mention the sailing we do in East Africa that you guys are watching right now with a monkey, no less. So the next question we get is, how was the sailing conditions in Africa? And the short answer to that is dangerous. And they change on the fly. Yeah. One minute it's blowing five, six knots. The next they gust up at 35 and you're like, oh my gosh, you, they, people say reef often, reef soon, reef, reef, reef. You really don't have any kind of warning, which is definitely different than any of the sailing conditions I'm used to. There's a reason why you walk in Cape Town. There's a lot of places call themselves 34 degrees south or 35 degrees south or whatever, because we were close to the roaring 40s there. And um, it, it changes quickly. It's harsh conditions, it's big swells, it's big winds, it's big waves. If you guys haven't seen that, then uh, go check out some of the other videos, but it's pretty, pretty fun sailing in Africa. It is, and you know, I really wish that, and I know all the sailing channels do this, but when, like, everything hits the fan, you kind of tend to put the camera down. I think I'm one of the few that is like, how do you feel? And he's like, I'm going to kill you because a mask going to come down. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I really wish that we would have the camera out more when some of these things happen. But we're, we're setting up some GoPros and um, we're going to have some more of that available. Um, without literally killing ourselves. <laughs> yeah, you know, when she gets the camera out and she's like, Wait, I'll help you in a second. I just have to film this for the guys on YouTube. I'm like, ah, put on the camera, help me, help me. And vice versa. Now when, when she's uh, on the helm and something goes wrong, I'm like, wait, I'm going to get the camera. Just, just hang on. Yeah. <laughs> so that's fun. And then um, how did you end up in Tanzania? And what was the scariest thing of sailing in Tanzania? 
Um, quick scare was probably when we hit that big rock and Bianca peed her pants. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Um, I don't know, I think I was a little bit afraid that the guys that were coming and asking for our permits were not actually government officials and they were gonna come back later and cause us a problem. Um, that didn't end up happening, thankfully, but that was a little bit scary for me. So sailing in Tanzania is quite interesting. You have to have some hair on your teeth. And I think that we're the <laughs> only- Hair on your teeth? Yeah, it's actually a, literally a saying in South Africa. It's a hair on your chest. No, hair on your teeth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we are literally, I think, the only YouTube sailing channel that sailed as far north in East Africa. Um, there's a reason we did that. First, we wanted to go and show you that. We wanted to be the first channel to go and show you those waters and explore that and document it for you. And the third is because their visas were running out in South Africa. You only get three months in South Africa and then you have to get out as a US citizen and then come back. And you cannot go to a bordering country. country. So Botswana and Namibia, which we had been to, were out. So go and sail with a friend, Van, which we Vander. love and miss very much <laughs> in Tanzania. So that's how we ended up there. Yeah, and that was such a cool experience. It was unexpected. Um, it was kind of last minute. We posted something on Facebook and uh, or Patreon, I think it was. And Van messaged us and he's like, well, there's a regatta coming up if you want to join. Just kind of tongue in cheek. Maybe we'd show up and we called him and we're like, OK, we booked flights. And he's like, really? So that's how we ended up on Talisker. We yeah. had such a great time. We really did. And then a big question right now is, who's the monkey? Who's the monkey? <laughs> and what's happening with this little guy? And why? Oh yeah, we've got some we've gotten some scathing uh, emails and messages about the monkey. And you know, I don't expect everybody to watch all the videos and be completely up to date with what's happening in Sailing Miss Lone Star Land. But if they did, they would know that Rafiki is on his way to a sanctuary with other monkeys. He was never intended to be a pet, although I daydreamed about it and may have done some research about how to get permits for a monkey, I realized very quickly that monkeys do not make good pets and they really need other monkeys. Absolutely. So. I grew up in South Africa, as I've said before, and I grew up around these little guys. And um, I saw this guy, or oh, I saw Rafiki not being treated very well. My heart really went out to them. I know what they do in Tanzania with them is they shoot and kill the mothers and they try and sell these little monkeys to holiday goers. Well, I wasn't a holiday goer and I didn't want to have a, a one week or a two week holiday with a monkey and sell it back to them or then don't know what to do with it. I wanted to rescue this little guy and then I wanted to show the world what the situation is with these little blue monkeys or vervet monkeys. We're going to take it to a monkey sanctuary, she said, and you know what's even better? We got to be in contact with Dr. Jane Budo, uh, who's in Tanzania. Which is amazing to me. This is like the woman that we did reports on in the fourth grade, and we daydreamed about going on safari and studying an animal that we were passionate about. Like, this is an, uh, an idol for me. So this was really, really, really neat. So we're in contact with Dr. Jane Goodall. She actually did a nice little video for us, which you guys will see soon. And um, Bianca gets to sell the little monkey in East Africa and go to islands where there's no one and have a little monkey on her back and she's doing reports on Dr. Jane Goodall and she's doing reports on vervet monkeys for her homeschooling and she's having such an amazing experience and it's been an, a great learning curve for us all. Yeah, I think that the experience that she's had with Rafiki has really given her a lot of compassion for animals and she already had a lot of compassion but a monkey is really different. I mean, she told me that they share 90% percent of our DNA this is one of the reports she did uh, I'll have to fact check her but um, and it's true they they're emotional and um, they need you and this is a really great way to show her what it's like to have a baby it's 24 7 care so um, I had a fantasy of owning a monkey someday and I don't anymore <laughs> they are not they're not meant to be pets yeah a lot of you guys have been asking, what do we do about Bianca's schooling? Um, Bianca is homeschooled, so she works for about four hours a day, um, math, grammar, um, I have her doing reports such as the Jane Goodall report. She also got to do a uh, five week foreign exchange student program in South Africa and she learned Afrikaans and she's still working on that which was great for her. So she does get a lot of interaction with kids, um, different camps and different programs that she goes to. Um, 
Um, so we're definitely paying attention to her getting child interaction. So it's been a really cool experience. We get to spend all of our time with her, which is yeah, and I think bad. yeah, absolutely. And I think the feedback we've been getting from people on shore is that she's really, really bright, and she's her her verbal and communication skills are superb she's emotionally switched on she is doing great she's a very good example of an eight-year-old girl sailing around the world and learning as much as she possibly can she's like a sponge she's just taking in everything she's learning a lot she's listening a lot and she's very very intrigued by things that she hasn't seen before she's very very switched on and very proud of her yes yes so no worries there i think she's going to have a very bright future and college and all of those good things ahead of her Okay, so you guys have been asking, what's next? Well, we have something really fun planned. We are headed back to Cape Town in a few weeks, and we are going to do an extreme road trip. So this guy likes pranks and dares. I hate them. Um, but I've agreed to do some things that are going to push me beyond my normal limits. You guys are going to love this. And you know what? What we do on shore sometimes is pretty cool so we decided to do this extreme road trip and i'm taking her to the scariest places and doing the scariest things on the coast of south africa and this is south africa this is where the <laughs> biggest sharks are the biggest jumps the biggest 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 in africa i thought everything was bigger in texas i was wrong and so there's gonna be a little break of sailing but you guys are gonna love that yeah, so please don't unsubscribe, okay? I know you guys get a little fickle and you're like, this isn't a sailing channel anymore. But the reason that we sail is to explore the world. Um, port to port and place to place, we take you inland a little bit and show you all of the places that you can reach by sailboat and all of the reasons that this lifestyle is so cool. And then where to after South Africa? Well, that is an interesting question because we are dealing with some weather issues. Because Little Miss is so far north, um, the weather really swings from hot to cold. So we are waiting for the snow to melt on Little Miss before we head over there and finish the refits and start sailing south. So what we're thinking about doing is going to Europe for a little while and sailing on a big, beautiful yacht. So we have to go to Europe in any case, because you fly from South Africa, Europe, stop usually, and then you go over. Um, we have been invited to come and see what it's like to be on a boat that's about $800,000 more than Little Miss. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? We'll never ever have this opportunity again. So we're like, we're coming. So we are going to fly to Barcelona, and then we're going to take you guys along on this beautiful Hansa 588. So we're gonna jump on a plane and go to Barcelona. And we're gonna show you guys all of that. Um, there's gonna be some really interesting sales. I've never been to, to Europe. I've never been to Italy, um, never been to Spain. So we're gonna do some sailing around there and show you the plan is, and this one always wants to, <laughs> yeah, when I say this is, I would really like to sail Little Miss around the world or at least across the Atlantic and uh, he says don't tell people that don't say that but I really really do want to and I think it's um it's really great to see these waters and what they're like before I head that direction on a 29 foot sailboat I feel like you know it's something my dad said if you say something you have to do it I know that's why I say it <sighs> I don't know if I want to say around the world with Little Miss it is possible you can do it absolutely can do it. He says that because he knows that if he said I can't do it, then I'd be pulling up the anchor and going bye right now. He's like, everybody says you need $100,000 to buy a boat. I'm going to buy a boat for a dollar. Did you guys see that episode where I'm flying over with her from Puerto Rico and I'm just like, oh my gosh. She's like, we're taking this one and we're fixing that one up. I'm like, what? Why? <laughs> okay, uh, I'll help you. Um, and so, yeah, she's a little bit, she's a little bit crazy. Um, she's very adventurous and she uh, she's very good for my 
for my personality because I'm like, no, 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 we have to do it like this, do it like that. She's like, come on, let's just do it. And she usually does it and she does it well. Yeah, we're gonna go to Europe and we're gonna go see a little bit of Europe as a short stopover before we go back to the boat and you're coming with us. My biggest excitement though is to get back to Little Miss and start refitting her. I have got lists upon lists and I'm making calls and I'm trying to figure out everything that needs to be done to her for her to get her ready and I'm very 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 excited so um, on the Facebook page I've got a lot of um, questions and um, I'm actually sending out the float plan so if you guys stick around and watch Vimeo we talk about the float plan um, very specific dates we're gonna do meet and greets all the way down the East Coast so that's really exciting um, if you guys want a copy of that um, it's still in the rough draft format right now but you can email at Miss Lone Star Adventure at gmail.com and I will send that to you and if you have any suggestions about our stops or you have any insider information we would love that so so this is what I want to do what? before you finish that I would like to have a South African braai every Saturday so while we're coming down the east coast of the states how about whenever we stop and do a meet and greet we get everybody out we get cold beers and we do a braai not a barbecue like a braai bra. we get steak and like thick nice rumps and like just have nice music and talk about sailboats and sailing and kids and life and whatever and let's have a braai. I think that You're would invited. Be, I think that would be amazing. All right you guys we hope that some of your questions was answered here we really tried our best to do it as, as quick and fun as possible for you if you have any more questions please comment below because it's nice to read it and it's nice to answer your questions. Also we want to know where you're from a lot of you guys commented on the last video where you're from I would love to know where you're from. This kind of helps me too because when we're in your area we can send you a message and you can come out and have a bride with us. Well, not if you're in Greenland. I want to go to Greenland. Yeah, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. But seeing that you want to take Little Miss around the world, <laughs> seems like you're having a beer in Greenland. It's going to happen. Thank you guys so much for watching. And we hope you enjoyed this special episode of Questions and Answers. Check the description below for all of the questions that we answer on Vimeo. Take Did you like this video? Please subscribe. Think about becoming one of our Patreon family. <laughs> for all the behind the scenes of these girls, what they're doing on the boat, the uncut, and the full version, go check them out on Vimeo. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week on Sailing Miss Lone Star. Maybe we'll make a deal. Maybe together we can go somewhere.